This is Tom. This is Tom CNC. Tom needs to mill some epoxy. But Tom doesn't know what speeds and feeds to use. So Tom crafted a test. Mill epoxy at various speeds to see what works best. This test is relatively simple. Mill a 1.5 millimeter deep circle, approximately 1 16th of an inch, at various speed rates, various RPMs, and using various bits. Test both straight plunge and a ramp cut to see which one of those work best. We will test 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120 inches per minute at 10,000, 14,000, and 20,000 RPMs. Since I have the Makita router, I will be using one on the speed dial for 10,000, 2.5 on the speed dial for 14,000, and 3.5 on the speed dial for 20,000. So in reality, those speeds are probably closer to 8.5, 12,000, and 18,000 RPMs. Adding one more dimension, we will test a two flute up cut, a two flute down cut, and a one flute up cut end mill. All of the bits are made by Amana, and they are spiral end mills. The epoxy we're using is Total Boat High Performance with the medium hardener, and it's been curing for about two weeks. All of the tools used for this test will be linked in the description below in case you want to pick some up. Okay, let's go through the results one by one, grouped by end mill. The first test was run with the Amana 46200K, which is a 1 8 inch two flute down cut end mill that is one half of an inch long. This specific bit has emerged as my go-to bit for nearly all of my milling operations, and it is hands down my favorite workhorse of all my bits. As you can see, the results are very good with very little chip out, great chip separation, and no material left on the surface or on the bit. One thing to note, at the faster spindle speeds, the material produced by the cutter was more dust than chips indicating the spindle speed was just simply too high. The good news is none of the tests demonstrated any melting or significant chip out, which is a serious plus. Now is a good time to say that if you're getting value out of this video, please consider hitting that like button or subscribing so you won't miss any follow-up content or any of my future content. Next up is the Amana 46125K, which is a two flute up cut end mill which has cutters that are 3 16th of an inch long. Until recently, this bit was my go-to bit for nearly all fine detail cutting and has only recently been replaced by the down cut bit that I mentioned in the previous test. Unlike the down cut bit, the two flute up cut bit left more debris in the walls and regardless of the feed rate or the spindle speed, there was some degree of chip out on nearly every cut. Interestingly, there did seem to be less chip out at the higher spindle speeds, but nevertheless, there was some amount of chip out. So in comparison to the down cut end mill, the down cut certainly provided better results overall. Finally is the Amana 51446K. This is a single flute up cut end mill, which has cutters that are three quarters of an inch long. This guy has proven to provide excellent results for acrylic and HDPE in the past, so I had high hopes for it with the epoxy. And it did not disappoint. All of the cuts were very clean, they had great chip separation, and the end mill produced some of the cleanest chips of all. Upon closer inspection, there was some very minor chip out on some of the cuts, but mostly at the higher feed rates. After setting up the test, I realized I also had a down cut one flute end mill, which is the Amana 51511K. However, I was too far into this project to add it to the tests. Given the great results of the down cut two flute end mill, I firmly believe the one flute down cut end mill would probably provide the best results of all of the bits. However, my belief will have to wait until the next round of testing for me to validate that presumption. Since I tested both a plunge cut and a ramp cut, 
I was super interested to see if either of these two entry methods would impact the quality of the cuts. Upon close inspection, the plunge cut had some amount of chip out for every single test, regardless of end mill or speed. So by that metric, if you have the ability to do a ramp cut, that will certainly provide better results than a straight plunge cut. One thing I noticed is all of the end mills showed a little bit of chatter at higher cutting speeds, which I was not expecting. The longer end mills showed more chatter overall than the shorter end mills, but that is normally the case anyway. I was just very surprised that there was this much chatter in epoxy, which in my opinion is a relatively soft material. But I guess, maybe overall, it's still harder than wood. Based on these results, the optimal speed for a 1 8 inch end mill seems to be 40 to 60 inches per minute at 10 to 14,000 RPM. And using a down cut end mill certainly provides better results than an up cut end mill in terms of any chip out on the surface. I'm a little surprised by the slow cutting speeds providing better results, but I am certainly not surprised by the down cut having less chip out than the up cut. As I mentioned, I believe the downcut one flute end mill might be the overall winner, but the proof will have to wait until the next round of testing. So with that in mind, I recommend any downcut bit over an upcut bit, and I recommend a one flute bit over a two flute bit for the best chip separation and the cleanest chips overall. Well, that was a fun little test and experiment that provided me with super valuable information for my future milling opportunities. I hope it provided you some insight to the most optimal settings for the epoxy as well. And as I mentioned earlier, all of the end mills and the epoxy used for this test will be linked down in the description if you want to pick some up for yourself. Additionally, the Fusion 360 file that I used for these tests will be available on my website, crgmakes.com, for free if you want to replicate the results or vary some of the testing parameters. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.